Hello, Roadrunner families. I want to welcome you to this week's Monday message. And I am super excited about this week's Monday message. We are going to kick off our series called A Day in the Life of a Roadrunner. The purpose of this series is to help you see what a day in the life of your child looks like at Roadrunner. You guys don't get to be at school with them every day. And we want to give you a little sneak peek into the classroom on what our lessons look like day in and day out. So we are going to kick off this series with a third grade math lesson. So we do teach Eureka math. Um, and so this little snippet of a lesson, it's going to be a 14 minute little snippet of a lesson. Our math blocks are 90 minutes. So you're going to just get to see one little piece of a math lesson. But what you're going to see is an application problem. And these kids are going to be learning two step word problems for the first time in this lesson. And something that's important for you to remember, while this is a third grade lesson, application problems are a part of our math routines in all grades K through six. So these are things that all of your students would be doing. Doing here at Roadrunner. Do you to watch how this teacher, what we do is model and break down a word problem. Word problems are very tricky for kids. And so we teach them the read, write, draw strategy. So this teacher is going to walk them through how to read the problem, write out the important information, and draw a visual representation. And while you're watching the video, I want you to check out a few things for me. So here's some look forwards. I want you to look at how the teacher introduces and reviews math vocabulary with them. Math is a language all by itself, and it is important that we continually build that math vocabulary for our kids to be successful in math. Do you look at student engagement? So the teacher has the students using whiteboards to do problems along with her and to do some of their own thinking. She has them engaging in some math talk either with her directly or with each other. She uses some questioning strategies. So she asks them very specific questions and gives them some prompts to help them understand their own math thinking and stretch that learning for them. And I want you to notice the level of teacher support. There are going to be two application, there's going to be two word problems in this demonstration. Um, and I want you to see how she changes that level of support from the first one to the second one to give them some more responsibility now that she's done the problem alongside them. So as you watch this video, like I said, it's about a 14 minute clip of a math lesson. I am going to turn off my video, but I'm going to stay with you and I'm going to put a little text box up in the left hand corner and I will just type in there and point out some of those things um, for you to look at and notice during the math lesson. Something I really hope our parents walk away with is understanding that yes, we could give students these math problems to do at home or on their own independently and they could probably do them in quicker than 14 minutes. Okay. Um, some of them would get it right, some of them would not, but they are missing a lot of the math learning. So the learning that's happening between um, the students and the teacher, the learning that's happening between each other, the way we are developing their math knowledge, it's not simply a matter of getting the right answer to a problem, but developing math thinking and math reasoning. And so when they're not at school, those these are some of the things that are really important that they're missing that they cannot make up at home. I want to thank you again for joining us today, and we hope that you enjoy the short clip of a math lesson. So here we go. So let's read this again. Red, orange, and blue scarves are on sale for $4 each. Nina buys two scarves of each color. How much does she spend all together? So the first thing we've learned to do is figure out our known information and our unknown information. We've been doing that for a while now. Known and unknown. Give me a piece of known information from this problem, please. Kiana. Four dollars each. What are four dollars each? Scarves. Four dollars each. Okay. We're used to having how many pieces of known information? Two. Two. And how many pieces of unknown information? One. One. That's going to change just a little bit today. Cooper, what's another piece of known information? She buys two scarves of each color. Okay. So two scarves, each color. What's our unknown piece of information, please? Bella. The total. The total of what? Scarves. Do we need to, is it asking us how many scarves? How much money did she money. spend? How much does she spend? And if it's talking about how much you spend, it's talking about money, isn't it? So how much money did she spend all together. We're not sure. So here's what I would do. I would use a tape diagram. We've been using those for several days now. 
So I want you to start creating your shape diagram, please. Remember, we're going to leave the end open because we're not quite sure yet how many units we need. Okay, let's look back at our knowns. These scarves are $4 each. She buys two scarves of each color, and then we have our unknown. Is there anything here that tells me how many units to create? Grayson, do you think so? What, what are you she thinking? She buys two scarves of each color. Okay, so... Three colors. Three colors. So two scarves... Times three. times three gives us two six. bits of three, three, six. Okay, that's just some extra information we needed. That tells us to create six units. So please draw six units. And if you get to the end like I did and you have some extra space, we're just going to erase those right off. And then double check, one, two, three, four, five, six units. Notice that my units are equal in size. Yours need to also be equal in size. Nope, yours are close enough. Don't worry about erasing. Remember, they won't ever look perfect on a whiteboard, and that's all right. They won't look perfect on a paper either, will they? Not unless we used rulers, and that's really not necessary. Okay. So tell me our knowns again. Yeah. Cooper. Four dollars each. Four dollars each. So would I label my unit or my total tape diagram with that four dollars each, Cooper? Total. Would this total diagram be four dollars each? Um, no. Um, Where would that go? I'm gonna draw my brackets. Would that be our unit or our total? Yeah, Kelsey? Yeah. That's our unit. So right here, we want to put $4. I'm gonna introduce a vocabulary word that we haven't used yet. This unit represents one scarf, but the value of this unit is $4. So we're used to saying this represents four hot dogs or five peaches. Today, we know it represents one scarf but we're adding money, so we know the cost or the value of each. Okay, $4. Or six crackers. What else do we need to label? What else do we know? We have two scarves of each color. Grace in here to help us figure out two times three is six. Add. We've used this here. We've used this. What haven't we? Add six and eight. Oh, actually, here, we can do this. We could go ahead and say six scarves here. But then we need to label our unknown. AJ, help me. Fair share. I mean. We're just labeling. We're going to get to that in a minute. Um, all together and then a question. Yes. How much money all together? Because that's our unknown. How much money does she spend all together? Okay, get that labeled. Now I want you to show you something that we could do instead of just counting to six. If you weren't quite sure that you needed, or if you didn't know to multiply two times three, you could have done this. Nina had two red scarves, two orange scarves, and blue, two blue scarves. So you could have just labeled those R, O, and B. Okay? What's the value of each unit? Four. 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 So let's go ahead and label those. Okay, have we labeled everything that we know to label? Yeah. Yes, we have. So now you can solve. I want to see an equation. So right here where I have the circle, I'm not telling you whether you need to use the operation symbol for addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. You have to determine that on your own. 
So right here I should see an addition, subtraction, multiplication, or operation symbol, or division operation symbol. Back up here with me, caps on your markers. How did we solve? What did you do, Maggie? I like, did like the um, like, You use the fair share strategy. Okay, so you once you did that, you determined there were four in each, right? Okay, but did you know the total? So how do you figure out the total? How do we know how much those scarves cost all together? What do we have to do, Zion? Um, we have to count by four, it's like four for each group. So we have four in each group. How many groups of four did we have? Six. Six. So I'm gonna take this away. We had six groups of four. Count by fours with me six times. Eyes right here, eyes here. Here. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. 6 groups of 4 equals 24. So what does our complete sentence answer sound like? How much does she spend all together? Nina spends $24 all together. You could say in all, but since our problem says all together, I like to use as many words from the problem as possible. What do we call that when we do that? Restating. Restating. Nice job. All right. Erase, please. We'll move on to our self. Ooh. Mrs. Landis just messed up. You were not supposed to erase. I did. We're so we're so used to. Erasing everything. You let me keep what I have. You can, it's all right if you erased already. That's okay. Wait, do we erase both I would definitely erase the side where you tried solving on your own. Yes. Okay, you'll find out why I, I shouldn't have told you to erase here in a second. Hey, look at this problem. Red, orange, and blue scarves are on sale for $4 each. Does that sound familiar? Uh, yeah. Nina buys two scarves of each color. She also buys a hat that costs $4. How much does she spend all together? Turn to your shoulder partner very quickly. Tell them what is different from this problem, from the first problem. She buys a hat. Hey, back with me. Five, four, three, two, one. C R O. What is the difference between this problem and our first problem, Eli? Um, she bought a hat. She bought a hat. Yes. So let me show you how I would add a hat. I would come right up here. How many hats did she buy? One. one. So I just need one unit. And right out here, I would write hat. If you still had this on your board, you would copy this on your board for me. What did these units represent? The scarves. Thank you for saying that loudly enough that I could hear. These represent scarves. So we're going to have to start labeling our tape diagrams from now on whenever we complete a two-step problem. What do I know about that hat other than there's just one? Then what else do I know about the hat? Um, that is, it costs four also. It costs four dollars also. So right here I'm going to have my four dollar value. I'll just label it in there with four dollars. Okay, so first, our unknown was how much does she spend on the six scarves? What does it say now? 
How much does she spend all together? So what do you think you're going to do to solve that? Layton, what's your idea? Skip count by how many times? Seven. Four times? Four times would get me to four scarves. Seven. Six times would get me to six scarves. Do I want to just figure out the cost of the scarves? What else do I need to know, Layton? How much the hat is along with the scarves. So how many groups of four is that? Help her out. How many? Seven. So that's seven. We have six groups of four plus one more group of four. What's a way to show seven groups of four? Uh, Say it louder. Seven times, seven times, times four. four. So how do we solve that? We're going to skip count. Markers down. I, want, I would love to see your fingers count with me to make sure we stop at the right spot. Ready? Four, Four eight, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight. Seven groups of four is $28. Now I have to tell you, most third graders wouldn't recognize that we added another group of four. They would have seen it, but I don't think that's the way they would have solved. Can anyone think, anyone think of another way we could have solved? If we know that the scarves add up to $24 and a hat costs $4 more, what else could we do, Tristan? Um, How could I find the total? You could just, um, <gasps> add. Yes, let's go with it. What oh, would we add? We could just add $4 to our value. $4 plus what was the cost of the scarves? $24. $24. How much is that? $28. $28. Because we have four ones plus four ones is eight ones. Two tens. $28. All right. If you have.